welcome to this video introducing ANSYS HFSS. And HFSS stands for High Frequency Structure Simulator. And it is one of the simulation tools that are inside of the ANSYS Electronics Desktop, AEDT for short. HFSS provides an electromagnetic solution based on your model geometry. It allows you to see and visualize many different results, not limited to, but includes S parameters, electric and magnetic field plots. And one of its primary examples are waveguides. And waveguides have been around for almost a century. And they come in many different shapes and sizes and construction. Functionally, they're all in line to its fundamental use which is a means to transport or guide energy from one point to another point efficiently. It's a transmission line. And the transmission line, that cross section can be rectangular or circular, or any shape for that matter. And that's why we need an electromagnetic simulation tool. And today waveguides and its components are an integral part of any application. Communications, millimeter, 5G applications, power, medical, any industry, commercial, military, waveguides are used everywhere. And waveguides have suggested frequency range of operation based on their physical dimensions. And the relationship between the waveguide dimensions and the lowest frequency is simple. If W is the larger of the rectangular cross-sectional area, then the longest wavelength that can propagate is lambda equals 2w. And the lowest frequency is the frequency over c over lambda or 2w. So let's design a rectangular waveguide using HFSS in the ANSYS Electronics Desktop student version for a 5G millimeter wave band, the WR15. It's in the V band and we look at some of its characteristics. And W is used in the naming convection of the rectangular waveguide, WR, rectangular waveguide, followed by W in mils divided by 10. That's the standard naming dimension. Open up that student version, insert an HFSS 3D design by checking on the projects tab and selecting insert HFSS design. By default, HFSS's length unit is in millimeters, and so we need to change it from millimeters to mils. Click on the units tab, and let's select mils in the unit type and click OK. So now let's go ahead and design a WR15 waveguide cavity as per the Electronic Industry Alliance, the EIA standards, which covers the V-band. The inside dimensions of the waveguide cavity in mils are 148 by 74. On the tab name draw, select draw box command. Select the box vertices as shown, first in the XY plane, then in the Z plane. And you'll notice that an object called box one is created under the solid type with vacuum material on the left-hand side folder in the 3D modeler window. And let's edit the dimensions of this box. Double click on the create box command. A pop-up window appears in the UI interface. Note there's always more than one way to do an action inside of HFSS, so you can always directly edit the box one inside the property panel window. And by default, that is on the bottom left. And you use these finite dimensions for the waveguide for the WR15. Click on OK to accept the changes for the dimensions. And also remember, we can use the keyboard shortcut keys like Control D to fit all the contents in the modeler window view. We could view the AEDT UI introduction for a list of the common shortcut keys. Let's modify the box attributes. Double click on that object, box one, open up the attributes dialog box, and you can rename the box to WG cavity. Sometimes if you appropriately name the object, 
it's very helpful, especially in more complex design that has many numerous objects. You can change the material. Click on the cell next to the material attribute and select edit. Select definition. Pop-up window appears. And that contains a list of all of the materials available in the selected library. And by default, electrical material properties are listed. AEDT includes coupled multi-physics, so you can also view thermal and or structural material properties as well. So let's fill the waveguide with some material, say taconic, and click OK. And you can also select the color for the object and set its transparency. Set the transparency to 0.8. This way you can see the fields. So far, we've created the object that represents the waveguide interior. And that is enough for the rectangular waveguide geometry creation. The reason behind that is that HFSS treats everything in the exterior of the simulation domain to be a perfect electrical conductor. It's covered with a PEC material. Hence, there's no need to create a metal housing for the waveguide. See you in the next video where we'll prepare the necessary steps for the electromagnetic simulation inside of the AEDT student version. Thank you for watching this video and find more information on HFSS or any of the ANSYS simulation tools. Just go to ansys.com forward slash courses today.